Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and IX Systems has sent me for review a free NAS, I'm sorry, true NAS. I'm going to keep mixing that up for a little while. You know, bear with me while I say true NAS and say it all together, true NAS core system. Now, this is actually still running the beta, so the test will be done all on the beta. But they sent me this for review, and I started with this being on. And uh, IX Systems has done a great job on this free NAS mini line, true NAS mini line, of making them really, really quiet because... I'm louder than this by a lot. I think my laptop when it spins up is louder than this and I have the lid off on it. So I'm gonna first say hats off to making a really nice quiet system. And that's really important because the target audience for this are people who you know, want something that maybe sits in their office with them. I've done a demo before on the FreeNAS Mini E, the really tiny one, how you can use it as a Steam library even, you know, for yeah, because you got 40 terabytes of games and you need a place to store it all. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video if you're interested in. This might be an even more fun box to do that with. But the quiet nature of it is really impressive. It's low wattage, uh, reasonably priced, and low powered. So it's checking a lot of boxes that make people happy. That quietness is really neat. I've actually been reviewing it for a couple of weeks. It's been just out of camera while I did videos while it was on. And uh, so far, I've had no problems with it at all. Went through a couple updates already. Uh, before we dive into some of the details and talk about this box and all the fun stuff with it, let's first click that like button and... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. We'll start here with the IX Systems announcement. So on August 20th, they had made the announcement that the compact office storage system provides up to 85 terabytes of whisper quiet HDD and flash via 10 gig networking. And uh, we'll cover all the specs of this, but yes, it does have 10 gig networking included. This is a really nice upgrade. Um, I'll leave a link to the press release and let's jump over to right here. And this is, uh, we'll run down through all the marketing stuff. I'll leave that for you to read and we'll just talk about it from the standpoint of this is the one I reviewed before, the True NAS Mini E with only four hot swappable bays, dual core C3338 Intel CPU. Yes, that says dual core. And uh, this was something I brought up before that even though it was a dual core, it was able to do quite a bit and still continues to run all of my son's Steam games along with being a Plex server, along with a lot of other features that I do with it. So I'm really impressed with the amount of efficiency you get out of this small dual core system that like I said, I still been using. This one, of course, is an octa-core, so we've bumped up the speed a bit, uh, the three C3758 Intel CPU. And now we have five plus two hot swap bays, and from eight gigs of RAM to 32 gig. Actually, the one that we have here, which I've already unplugged it and I just yanked the power cord out, has specifically 64 gigs of RAM in it, so as outfitted. It also has all SSDs in here, so we're not gonna have any spinning drives. But like I said, I'm gonna say the benchmarks for another time. It goes out of scope of this particular video. Uh, the default config comes with dual 10 gig on there, and our system has dual 10 gig RJ45s and dual SFP plus 10 gig. So technically we have four 10 gig ports on this. That's pretty impressive. And great performance, like they said here. Uh, we'll dive into the performance a bit later. They have all the very detailed specs right here, but let's take a closer look at the hardware. And um, on, among the other links I'm gonna leave here, Serve Their Home has also done a write-up on the IX system TrueNAS Mini X Plus. And like I said, they, they uh, think positively of it as I do. Patrick does a great job over there on their write-ups. The one thing I'll comment on that I will not be able to demo, um, I'm running a beta version of, uh, well, a slightly different one than they probably reviewed uh, beta version. It seems to have broke the enclosure display. So that is a feature that's going to be when this comes out of beta that it's gonna be able to do this and you'll 
have full enclosure. Now, I really like this. This is the build it or buy it argument you occasionally get, and this is a big advantage when you buy one of these. IX system knows exactly where all the drives are because they designed and engineered this. Therefore, if you have a problem, they're all listed in order very clearly, and you can get you know, these little diagnostics that come up when you get a true IX systems. And I just want to bring that up because I thought it was really cool, but unfortunately um, it decided in the beta to have a problem. I'm not sure where that problem lies. I've notified them, they know um, that it's not doing it, but please note that's because we're running a beta version of software because I'm really trying to test out the latest version. Now, let's look at the hardware itself and dive a little bit closer into this. Actually, I pulled the power cord up, but not the other cords. We'll start at the front, that five drives that we have here. We have five that are the three and a half. Now, even though we have two and a half inch SSDs in there, they're easily removed. They're easy to lock and keep fingers out of them. And I'll bring that up because if you're using this in a home and you have kids or someone, I mean, who doesn't want to press that button? I mean, that spring action is pretty cool. And um, yeah, if this is where Kids, I know kids shouldn't be in reach of a NAS, but um, people saying that probably don't have kids. Kids are very clever at finding things with buttons on them and pressing them. And these little buttons have the ability to be locked. So uh, you spin the little knob in them and they will go into a lock mode and you can't easily open them up. The same thing with down here, we have a couple mini versions. These are a little snug, but come right out. And these don't have the lock, unfortunately, but the same little spring action when they pop up. These are little two and a half inch bays down at the bottom. And like I said, everything in here is all SSDs. So we'll get this pop back in. Now, spinning around to this side right here. This is a nice feature. This is a full height SFP Plus card in there. So this is a Chelsea IO. I think I said it right. And it's dual SFP Plus on here and full height for the adding card. So there's our two 10 gig uh, ports on the back at the IPMI, two USBs, and that full height. So if you wanted to switch out for a different card that you thought maybe was more compatible or you want to put your own card and not order it from IX systems for an add-in, one, easy enough to take side cover off, two, full height, which is, you know, opens you up to more cards than just the half height one. And there's plenty of room in here to fit that. Now kind of obscured behind here, we'll try to see it though, is the way the back plane is connected to these drives. So the back plane is, uh, has a kind of like a SAS expander is what it reminds me of, but it's all SATA. And that SATA is connected and expanded off the motherboard, off a connector, and then goes out to a series of SATAs that go into the back plane and the integration for the case. Now the operating system itself is loaded on a SATA DOM that's just kind of hard to see, but it's back there uh, behind the card. Now we'll flip it around to the other way. This is how the cable management came to us when IX system shipped me this device for a review and it's clean enough. Uh, it's for all the little extra cables that they have. They tucked them up nice. I didn't have to do anything. Nothing feels in the way. And for a compact case design, I think they did a very adequate job on the cable management. Now the fans are of course a important part. One, they're accessible, replaceable, but they chose some really quiet fans. We have the larger fan in the back right here and it seems to have no problem pulling enough air through. There is a CPU fan on here as well to keep the CPU cool and everything seems really well made so it shouldn't have any problems and you know, provided you don't have a super dust the environment should have a really, really long life. Uh, dust kills more PCs than age. Uh, we were talking about this the other day, how most of the time, if a computer doesn't get dusty, it's traded in or removed out of uh, service for obsolescence. But yeah, if you have a really dirty environment, yeah, keep, that, keep them clean. They last a really long time. They usually age out before they uh, die out. Um, but there's only those fans in there. That's really it. You have one in the back and then one CPU fan. So that's part of what contributes to keeping it so quiet. So let's get this plugged in. I'm gonna put the lid back on, which makes it of course even quieter than it was. You could probably hear it a little bit in the microphone, but we'll put the lid back on, run down the software real quick and uh, talk about some of the other details. We're gonna start right here with the lights out management. I really like this feature being on these devices because well, now I don't have to have a monitor sitting next to them. And of course it makes it that much easier when you're doing an update remotely and you're nervously waiting for that screen and login page, but you wanna see what's on the display and the console output. And of course the system is modern, so it comes with the HTML5 version being able to log in. I really, just this makes my life easier. I can see what IP address, I see what's on the screen, I see what it's up to. Has the power controls capture if I need to reboot it, uh, virtual keyboard. And another thing that's really nice, and we'll close this, is the virtual media options 
And if you need to remotely reload this, you can set up a virtual media path in here as well. So get the you know new ISO that you need, attach it virtually to this. And it does require some local storage if you're trying to do that. It does have the ability to mount, I believe, from your computer as well, but that's not, if you're remote, that may not be as effective. But this concept being in there is a nice feature. Uh, Besides remote control, we have a handful of alert options, fan alerts, syslog alerts, which is great. So you can have hardware alerts going to wherever you need them to go. So you can keep an eye on the hardware of what's going on. We have server health, sensor readings, and event logs. So we can check the temperature and see how it's doing. So it's been running for a little while. With it on, uh, From the time I turned it on, I actually ran a few tests, did a few things. It's been about an hour of on time. I wanted it to ramp up to see where it sat temperature wise. And you know, still not overheating, not too hot. Uh, it still seems pretty reasonable. Now on to the TrueNAS itself. So this is running very specifically TrueNAS 12 beta 2.1. So this is a, you know, as new as we have available to us, I didn't switch to the nightlies uh, as of September 5th, 2020. And as I mentioned, it's you know, still in a beta, the TrueNAS Core is, but it's coming along quite well. And this system outfitted with 64 gigs of RAM, two SFP pluses uh, for 10 gig connectivity and two RJ45 standard, you know, network interface for 10 gig connectivity. I want to do some further testing that will be after I do this video. I just want to get the hardware video and kind of talk about the device itself. Uh, but so far with that kind of connectivity, plenty of options on there. Now I have over in the background here, just something I'm going to run just to load this up. I've got an iSCSI connection on here. Uh, I'm just loading up this to see some CPU usage on here and push this to its limit. Now, while I'm doing that, I'll just jump over here and see what kind of IOPS we're getting and refresh this page. While it ramps up, refresh. And I've run this test a couple times, once again, to help put some load on this and build a little bit of heat. But we're seeing, you know, about 18,000 IOPS from this base configuration that I have. And just one VM running one little script here, which will actually cancel show you with the script. It's just the uh, FIO script that I'm running on here just to generate some noise, essentially. This is not going to be any type of benchmark that we're gonna test performance. I'll do that at a later date where I'll do some benchmarking on this device with these SSDs to see what kind of performance it gets on there. But, you know, overall, it's been really reliable and solid, but that's kind of the nature of ZFS and TrueNAS. It's warning me that doing this is pushing some high usage on there, but you can still get some pretty good performance even out of this lower end, essentially, Intel Atom processor. Um, but other than that, I'm not gonna spend too much time dwelling on this. I've got some other videos on TrueNAS and TrueNAS Core and reviews, and I have more videos coming and getting started with it. Uh, but I've been really happy with the performance and of course, just randomly unplugging the system. Uh, ZFS, as always, has proved resilient against, uh, well, oopses and uh, fault tolerant, which is really important. Now, one thing I will note is having these upgraded with the 64 gigs of RAM, there's always a common misconception that you have to have a lot of memory it's beneficial to have a lot of memory. The other one, as I pointed out in my other videos on like the FreeNAS Mini with only eight gigs of RAM, still performs really, really well as the things that we wanted to do with it, such as the Steam library and the Plex and things I was running. But when you bump up to more memory, that gives opportunity to cache things. So we only have this one thing running on this. So we've only got a little sliver. Most of this is free, but we got this little sliver being used, but this starts getting exponentially used. The more things that can be put in memory, well, memory is faster than the SSDs. Uh, so it's beneficial, but not required to have all that memory. But it is a nice feature that they have the four slots in there. So you can put this much memory in there. Because for a lot of IO intensive, especially, you know, video editing, you're repeating, you're pulling the same assets all the time, you're constantly queuing up the same things, having that memory available to cache all those is really nice. So that's it for as far as I'll talk about the software on this. Like I said, more reviews coming of it, and I'll do a separate video on benchmarks. But overall, even me pushing it with some iSCSI here, still nice and quiet, even with the CPU getting loaded up, even with it warming it up a little bit. I haven't had any issues uh, for the couple, eh, a couple weeks that I've been testing this box. Now, like I said, targeted to small business, targeted to a lot of people who say, you know, I just want not to tinker with a bunch of hardware. I want a turnkey system that just works. This is great for that. It's from IX Systems. They spec'd out the hardware. So you know what you're getting. You know that it will just work out of the box. And uh, I think that's a great 
target for this. I mean, I know there's always someone going, but, you know, I'm going to mash out, uh, adding it up and building it myself. Well, absolutely. Those are people who want to tinker and want to spend their time doing that. And it's great that that is still the same software. You can run TrueNAS on stuff you, TrueNAS Core on stuff you built, or you can get it directly from IX Systems as a turnkey device because you go, maybe you just want to get right to video editing and you want a great storage device for that or whatever you want to store on here and other services. So my overall thoughts on this, I really like the device. I like this whole lineup from IAC Systems. Computing on the edge is kind of some of their target for this because we do need to have, you know, stuff that's not always in the cloud. It is very convenient to have things local, especially as someone who edits videos that are currently being recorded and streamed to another TrueNAS core system that I'm testing in the back. Um, yeah, it's great to have all this locally. It's not as easy to stream it all online and then pull it back down to edit it. I think these devices kind of fit that bill really good. Um, I'll leave links to all the things I discussed, like the Serve the Home article and the analysis from IAC Systems, but um, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.